Good evening. evening. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Delighted to welcome you here to worship at Salem United Church of Christ here on site as well as online as we celebrate the old story in new ways, listening with new ears for what God is bringing to birth in our midst. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We're glad you're here as a part of our worshiping community. I invite you to rise in body or spirit. Let us join together. We're going to sing the first two verses of the first Noel, number 139. Hello there, our environment. Start reading. Each day in Advent, I mean, forgot to say the Christ candle. Each Sunday in Advent, we have celebrated hope, love, joy, and peace. Tonight, we remember the source of each of these in our lives, Christ, Jesus Christ. John's Gospel begins, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Jesus, our hope, that we are loved. Jesus, our love, that we can love one another. Jesus, our joy, that life is more than our productivity, our status, our ego. Jesus, our peace, that justice with peace is possible in our world 
and in our lives. As we light the Christ candle of love, let us remember and celebrate the light that shines in the darkness and that the darkness has not overcome it. As is the practice of our church, we invite you to pass the peace with one another. Whether offering a hug or a handshake, or if you're not in a hugging mood or you got the sniffles, you can just go like this. There's always the pandemic elbow bump. However it is, pass the peace with one another. And the peace of Christ be with you.
seated. And I invite my young church friends to join me up front, if you would, please. For those unfamiliar, the young church cough is 111. <laughs> Come on up, we got room. There's room up here. Yeah. Seeing you all up here, I almost started off good morning. Good evening. How we doing? Awesome. It is so good to see all of you. Now, I have a question. What is your favorite part about Christmas? Presents. More presents. The food. Fondue. Ooh, now we try to find out which family I need to go visit. Yes. Gingerbread houses. Yes. Candy canes. Oh, I'm loving these answers. What else? What's that? Houses with candles in them. How cool is that? Now, I got to thinking about all those things about Christmas. Uh-huh, and all of you. And I was like, how can I, in one little phrase, give you everything you need to know about Christmas? And I didn't figure it out. Because there's so much about Christmas. There's the birth of Jesus there's the story of his mom, Mary. There are the angels and the shepherds and the wise men. And I was trying to come up with what would be the one thing to take away to remember. And somebody else told it to me. They didn't know they were telling me this at the time, but they gave me the answer. And the answer is, wherever you are, whatever is going on, figure out how to be just a little bit kinder. Sometimes kindness is helping people. Sometimes it's taking care of stuff that needs to be taken care of. Sometimes kindness is, sometimes it's being nice, but it's a lot more than just being nice. So maybe with all the angels and with the shepherds and the wise men, and the whole story, which is beautiful and lovely, and I want all of you to learn it. But if I had to give you one piece to take away, maybe try to find a way to be just a little kinder. What do you think? Can we try that? That's not too much like homework? No? Okay. Well, as we do here on Sunday mornings, we're going to put our hands together and bow our heads and close our eyes, and I want to say a prayer, and I want you to help me with it by repeating it after me, okay? Dear God, we give you thanks for this day and this church and for all the love you give us. Help us remember that in the midst of all the celebrations, with all the lights and all the candles that we really want to be about your love for us and your love for everyone. Help us be a little bit kinder all this we pray 
In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much, and you can head back and have a seat. We come to our time of prayer. I think it was at the, the men's group dinner Thursday night, I told one of the folks that prayer is one of those things way too important to leave to the professionals. It's an all play. It's something we can all take part in. Our connection with God is not through me or Anything like that, our connection to God is God's love for each and every one of us. And so a time of prayer is a time of lifting to God those concerns on our hearts and minds. A time perhaps of listening for angel songs. What prayers do we have this evening? Half the crowd's like, well, we told you our prayers this morning. <laughs> the other half's like, dude, I'm visiting. I'm not speaking up. <laughs> and that's okay, too. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, on this sacred night, on this night of expectation, this night of already and not yet. We come to you in prayer. We come to you as a people who carry burdens. We carry our own burdens, and we carry the burdens of those we love. We carry the burdens of a weary world seeking to rejoice. On this night of your surprising. Surprise us again with grace that is big enough for whatever it is we face, for you are enough. Surprise us again with something born in our midst that brings peace and hope and joy and love, for you are enough. Let us know again that whether we are like the shepherds far from home working every day or we are like magi traveling from afar with riches, whatever our lot, whatever our state, whatever our life, yet we are drawn to you and your love is big enough for us and for all. So on this Christmas Eve, remind us again, bring us again to the awareness of that love that was born vulnerable and yet was fierce enough to take on the world. To this prayer we add those prayers that weigh on our hearts and minds, those that we have yet to find words for. We pray these prayers now in these moments of silence. All this we pray in Jesus' name as we join our voices together in the prayer that he taught. 
using the words in the bulletin or those closest to our hearts, the prayer that begins, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Good evening and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Or Buenas Noches and Feliz Navidad, if you please. We have a couple readings this evening. The first is from the book of Isaiah, and it is chapter 9, 2 through 7. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. As people exult when dividing plunder for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire for a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from the time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The second reading is Luke chapter 2, and it looks like verses 1 through 20. The birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth and Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While we were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. The shepherds and the angels... In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them.
Let us pray. Gracious God, on this night when we celebrate your word becoming flesh and dwelling amongst us full of grace and truth, let your word dwell within us. Let your word dwell within us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace and peace to you this evening. Grace and peace. For many of us, the story is so familiar. Emperor Augustus says, all shall go back to their hometowns because empires do what empires do. Joseph takes a very pregnant Mary back to Bethlehem. The family's on the move in this critical and precious time. The guest room above the house is full. And the baby's born anyway because babies show up when they show up. And then the angel appears to shepherds out in the fields. Pop quiz. Boy, some of you looked up like, wait, what? What do the angels in the New Testament say every time they show up? Do not be afraid. I know, some people raised their hand, some people just shouted it out. <laughs> Do not be afraid. The angels start that when they come to, come to Mary, when they come to the shepherds, when they come in visions to Joseph. The messengers from God begin each message with, Do not be afraid. It's as if the message from God is supposed to be, do not be afraid. There, now, why not be afraid? See, the shepherds have no Hollywood movies with all the special effects to get used to an angel appearing in the midst of where they are. They have not been on Facebook and clicked on the link that says, 10 things to do when an angel shows up at your workplace. Someday we'll, we'll write the clickbait gospel. Do not be afraid. Why? Because the angel is bringing good news of great joy for all the people. Good news, great joy for all the people. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of tired of bad news. Like how churches in the original Bethlehem don't have services tonight. Bethlehem's in the West Bank. It's in the midst of a war zone. Not a war most of the people of Israel want, not a war most of the people of Palestine want, but a war that their leaders want. And one that perpetuates all the worst stereotypes and develops new generations of animosity. I am tired of bad news. Like how a basketball team has to leave a gymnasium because the referee has been up in the coach's face threatening. And how the students have been making racist taunts. Here in Wisconsin, they had to leave between the JV and the varsity game because how the referee was treating an African-American coach. How the superintendent of the school district where the game was played was sitting right there at the scoring table and did nothing. Nothing in response. This was not in the 60s or the 70s or the 80s or the 90s or the aughts or the teens. This was last week. I'm tired of bad news. 
Like how COVID and RSV and the flu are on the rise across the country and here in Wisconsin, but people are just over it. So vaccination rates are very low and mitigating procedures are few and far between. I'm tired of bad news. Like people who profess loudly to anyone who will listen that they are by God Christian and that they love Jesus and yet they are the self-styled gatekeepers on God's love. God's grace is only for them and those who look like them, those who speak like them, those who vote like them, those who pray like them. And the beauty of the diversity of all God's children is a casualty of this cruel and wrong-headed theology. And with it, the benefits of democracy, the right to vote, participation in the rewards of society are only for those who look, think, pray, speak, and vote like they do. And the dignity and safety and livelihoods of all the diversity of all God's children are a casualty. Bad news is not new. There was plenty of bad news in Jesus' day. An occupied land, an empire at work, no room. And yet the angels say they've come with good news of great joy for all the people. What is joy? We know what happiness is. We know what feeling good is, but what is joy? Happiness is a feeling, it's an emotion. We might think of it as the opposite of other emotions like sadness or the opposite of mental states like depression. Feeling good is a sensation. That first sip of coffee. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. There's nothing better than that first sip of coffee. Now, if you're not a coffee drinker, you can substitute tea or eggnog or whatever. The touch of a beloved's hand, the satisfaction of a job well done, all of these can be feeling good. Joy is something more. Joy has something to do with appreciation and connection. It has something to do with belonging and something to do with purpose. We can have joy in the midst of hardship, joy in the midst of a world of bad news. Joy because the one who made us loves us. Joy because the one who knows us completely. Completely loves us. And this is good news of a great joy. We could use a little more joy in our lives, couldn't we? One of the things I find fascinating is every now and then I read the old, old story and I find something new. These are ancient words translated a long time ago, and yet I'm sure that as I read it this year, somebody's put some new stuff in there and they printed it in the same font just to throw me off. Now, it's entirely possible that I'm just forgetful. Or maybe God's trying to get my attention. I've read this passage in Luke every year for over two decades as a minister. And this year, I was caught up short. You notice it's, it's not even on the, the cover of the bulletin. We have, I bring you good news of great joy, and the next line isn't there. It says, for all the people. I could have quoted you good news of great joy all day long, but this year the words I really needed were for all the people. Not just for those who think they're the only ones worthy of God's love, but all the people. Not just for the ones with authority to start and end wars who are at little risk themselves from the violence they conduct, but for all people. Not just for Gaza, not just for Israel, not just for Ukraine, not just for Russia, not just for us, whoever our us happens to be, and not just for them, whoever our them happens to be. 
all the people. See, it never was for God loved some of us. It was for God so loved the world. It was never joy to a select few and beloved people. Joy to the world. That's a love bigger than the status quo. That's a love bigger than the problems we face. That's a love bigger than the lines we draw and the categories we have and the ways we do the us and the them thing. Joy to the world. Born in a little baby. Born in a fragile little baby. I invite us to ponder that in our hearts. And I invite us to rise and sing together about this joy to the world. Thanks be to God. We're using the music on the insert. Let us sing. Please be seated. This morning I asked people what their favorite Christmas song was, and we heard all of the usual suspects, from Joy to the World to Silent Night to O Holy Night to all the others. Somebody mentioned the little drummer boy, which if you think about it is, of course, the way to celebrate the season by bringing your drum set to the maternity ward. Let's see how quickly hospital security gets you out of that place. But the beauty of that song is whoever we are, what we do is our gift. What we offer to the world is not just the envelope or the hi, I've given electronically card placed on the plate at church. It's the Monday morning and the Wednesday afternoon and the, the what we do with our lives. For the gift of life and the gifts of life, what we return is our lives. Freely we have received, so freely let us give.
Pray with me, please. Generous God, receive these gifts. We pray that you magnify them for your glory and the needs of your creation. In the spirit of Christ, we pray that no one would have to search for compassion or care, that all might know the abiding hope of community, and in our world be rebirthed in your realm. Amen. Please be seated. The tradition of Salem United Church of Christ is that this table does not belong to me. And right now, this table does not belong to Salem or to the United Church of Christ. This is God's table. All are welcome here. Anyone who wishes to receive is welcome to do so. Make note of the elements. There's a little guide in there about the bread being free from nuts and gluten and casein, and which rows have grape juice and which rows contain wine with the cup. We will receive communion where we are seated. On this night when we celebrate God coming to us in Jesus Christ, we do so with the remembrance of the whole of the story and of Christ giving himself for us. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God most high. Gracious and holy God, we gather this night to remember, we gather this night to celebrate, we gather this night to be a part of your story. A story begun long before we showed up. In creation, when you took dust and breathed into it the breath of life, and we, your children, lived. When you brought people out of slavery through the Red Sea and into a new land, into a new covenant, into a new way of being, and they lived with the prophets who brought a new word for the day that was needed so that the people would live. And in that word made flesh, born to Mary, Jesus Christ, that we might live. We remember that later in the story, Jesus gathered with those on the, the hills, those in the plains, and he took bread and broke it, giving thanks for it, and gave it to them, and multitudes were fed. We remember when he gathered in another house, and this time the room above the house was available, and he and his people celebrated your saving acts in the Passover. And we remember how he took the bread and gave you thanks and broke it and gave it to his people saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same way after the supper, he took the cup and he poured it, giving thanks to you, O oh God, and he gave it to them, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood, so that when you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you remember me, so that when you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you cannot forget whose you are. You are remembered. Gracious God, on this holy night, come and be present with us. Let these simple gifts of bread and cup 
Let us know your love within us again. This we pray in the name of the one whose birth we celebrate, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Come from the east and the west, from the north and the south. Come young and old, rich and poor, whoever you are. For all things are now ready. Go for the people hunger. The body of Christ is given for you. Take and eat. Amen. Go for the people thirst.
the cup of salvation, take and drink. Let us pray together our prayer of thanksgiving. On this holy night, gracious God, you have brought light and life to us again in Jesus Christ. We thank you for all the ways that Christ comes to us in every season and every day. Bless us to go forth carrying the hope, love, joy, and peace of Christ with us into the world. In Jesus' name, amen. It's not enough to have a Christ candle on the Advent wreath. For each one of us can carry the light of Christ with us. And so I will invite you, as we light our candles, you all already know this, but I say it anyway, too much time spent on the fire department in Michigan. You take the unlit candle and you tip it over the one that's lit. You keep the lit one upright. This way nobody gets wax on themselves. But we don't just light candles because candles are good, although they are. We remember the words of Howard Thurman. I will light candles this Christmas, candles of joy despite all the sadness, candles of hope where despair keeps watch, candles of courage for fears ever present, candles of peace for tempest-tossed days, candles of grace to ease heavy burdens, candles of love to inspire all my living, Candles that will burn all year long. And as we pass the light, we will do so singing Silent Night. And some of you know the story of the first time Silent Night was sung. The story goes that the, the minister in Germany composed it on the guitar but was going to play it on the pipe organ that Christmas Eve, but... This is the days before copiers, so something had to break. And it wasn't the copier, which always seems to mess up around Christmas Eve. It was the pipe organ that broke. So he ran back home and grabbed his guitar. And the first time it was sung, Silent Night was sung, accompanied by guitar. So this evening, as we pass the light, we will sing Silent Night. And in our tradition, we will sing it the three verses in English and one in German. And this is where you get to help me because that's not one of my languages. But I am willing to learn. Let us share the light of Christ with one another.
When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. On this holy night, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God's countenance be lifted up upon you. May you always know this peace. Amen and amen. Go out into this holy night. Amen. Merry Christmas.